Canadian Premier League newsroom presented by Volkswagen on day seven of our 2024 CPL season previews. Charlie O'Connor Clark with Mitchell Tierney. I, I'm hoping that we're not boring you by now, but if you stuck with us to number seven, or if you're just a Vancouver FC fan looking to hear about your club, you have come to the right place because that is who we are talking about today, entering their second year as a CPL team, finishing seventh last year in their inaugural year, hoping to improve on that and push towards the playoffs. Same drill as always. Timer is on. We've got 10 minutes, Mitchell. Let's start at the top of this list of questions. How important is this offseason's major homecoming for Vancouver FC? We've seen players like Ben Fisk, like Paris G, like David Norman, like Zach Verhoeven, all from the Vancouver area, come home to this CPL club uh, and represent their hometown. How important do you think that's going to be for this team? I think it's a major and exciting storyline for the club, not only for this season, but long term and shows why this club was so needed and important for the league in the sense that there are so many talented players from that region, the the lower mainland in British Columbia that maybe haven't really had the opportunity to play at home in, in past years. And I think... You know, maybe obviously last year being their first year, I think there were a lot of players that maybe that was in their head where, oh, now that there's this club, you know, obviously I'm in contract somewhere else. But if the opportunity does come up to to go home and and play for this team, I'd love to do so. So, you know, I'd imagine just based on geography and and also based on what they were able to show last season, you know, Afshin Gotfi and, and his group got a lot of calls this offseason from local players and yeah, I think it's going to be a huge recruitment tool for the club, not only this offseason, but going forward as well. And, you know, it always helps when when players get to play in front of family and all those sorts of things. Those are the added bonuses of, you know, this Canadian Premier League. Yeah, and that's something that a lot of these guys have talked about. Again, guys like Paris G, Ben Fisk, watched Vancouver last year, played against them, enjoyed going to Langley to play those games. And at the end of the year, kind of looked at their options and thought, yeah, that's what I want to do now. That's where I want to be. Uh, I, I think somebody like Ben Fisk has said that that's where he wants to end his career. Uh, and, and I think that's really nice that that option is there now for these players. Mm-hmm. We've seen it in other markets as well where where players really do value that. Uh, the other thing that they've brought in, though, in kind of a, a you know double double win for this team is a lot of these guys have a lot of Canadian Premier League experience. Now, they've, they've brought in, I think... In total, over over the new additions, 298 games of CPL experience. It's a lot. Which is a lot. Uh, Mitchell, how much do you think that's going to help this team this year? Yeah, I think it's huge. Um, they were an incredibly young team last season. Um, not only in, you know, a lot of players who are either you know, first time professionals are also new to the Canadian Premier League. So, you know, having your David Normans, your Zach Verhoeven's, you know, Paris G, Moses Dyer, uh, another incoming player, um, you know, Ben Fisk, like there's all kinds of these players who have significant experience in this league, who know what to expect and who can kind of be mentors for those younger players as well. So, yeah, I think that, you know, on top of being very talented and being proven to be good players in this league as well. So I think that, that's the big story again of their off season is local talent and experienced talent coming in and, and adding to an already exciting group, uh, you know, of younger players who, you know, have, have very high ceilings. Yeah. There is a knack to playing in the Canadian premier league. I think we've learned over the years. It is hard. There's something we talked about when we discussed Halifax uh, earlier is that it's hard to play on the road in this league. It's hard to travel and it's hard to, to get used to some of the ups and downs of playing in this league. So having more players in that room, especially experienced older players in their careers who are able to help uh, what was a very, very, very young team last year, which I think showed its its age and inexperience at times. So to have those people in this dressing room, I think can probably help them quite a bit. And speaking of you know how young a team this was last year, that's our next question. Over 5,000 under 21 minutes for this team last year. Uh, James Cameron was nominated for under 21 player of the year. Anthony White was a huge part of this group at the back. TJ Tahid was the youngest player ever to sign and ever to score in the Canadian Premier League last year. The list goes on in this group. Will that youth movement, Mitchell, do you think continue this year? And what players do you have your eye on in that sense? Yeah, I think so. I'd be 
pretty surprised if they weren't the league leaders in U21 minutes again this season because they've only added to that group. And, you know, a guy mm-hmm. like Grady McDonald, who 16-year-old Irish international, um, one of the most promising players, and obviously, you know, supplanted TJ Deed as the youngest player to sign in CPL history. So, you know, they're they're already uh, in their second season uh, rewriting their own league history, which is is incredible. Um, you know, Elaj Ba adds to that group as well a promising young player from uh white caps too and yeah i think that you know guys like anthony white crawford tj tahi james cameron like all these guys can take a big step forward and i think it is important that they're now surrounded by more experienced players and maybe in a better position to succeed this year i think that's the value of the of the canadian premier league is obviously it's it's a league that prioritizes young canadians and you know their youth development, but it's not a youth league. Like they still are surrounded mm-hmm. by these pros who can, um, you know, be those leaders for them, who can show them what it takes to, to reach those next levels. Because many of these guys have, um, you know, you look at a Ben Fisk who's played in Spain uh, as an example, like there's, there's guys on this team that have played at some, some incredibly high levels and can now help these young players, you know, reach those high standards. So, yeah, a, a long way to say that exciting players. Um, and I think that we're going to see a lot of them again this year, um, you know, fight their way into a lineup with and amongst those uh, more experienced signings. Yeah, I mean, Renan Garcia has played at some of the highest levels of football mm-hmm. um, a while ago. But, you know, again, again, this is a team with uh, maybe the youngest and I think oldest or second oldest player in the league. So a bit of a spectrum here, but this is, Again, a team that has prided itself on giving opportunities, especially to Vancouver area, lower mainland, young players. James Cameron, I, I think, will continue to explode in this team. I think he was he was training over in England with some pretty big, I, I think, Premier League clubs at yeah. times uh, in the off season. Uh, he's a player who's going to continue and still under twenty one eligible, by the way. So will be a big part of this team. Grady McDonald will see kind of how he's phased into the professional game. I think. He's at an age where you want to manage that and, and find ways to give him that experience without throwing him to the wolves. But again, this is a, a team that has always, I mean, has always, it's a, it's a club that's a year old, but <laughs> they definitely have prioritized uh, being a big, big, big part of the developmental scene in the, in the lower mainland and British Columbia community. Question number four, Mitch. Which of the players brought in the new signings of Vancouver FC do you think is going to have the biggest impact? Because we've mentioned a lot of these names, uh, and I think that there are there are a lot of good options here. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I'll, I'll go with Paris G. I, I think he um, could be a really important piece. Uh, again, a player who plays fullback, which is one of those spots where Vancouver, you know, especially I think lacked experience last season, and and it mm-hmm. showed um, throughout the year and. Uh, he could be a mentor for those young players, but also he's one of the best ones in the league. And, and you know, he'll bring composure and, and quality on the ball. Uh, led all defenders last year in terms of, you know, chances created in, on balls played into the box. So, you know, when you have the talent that they do up front, uh, that adds even more for for Vancouver FC side. And we know as well, he's got that positional flexibility. So uh, I don't think it was by design, but he can play as a center back. He played pretty much anywhere last year. You can play both sides uh, as well as a fullback, which is important. So I really like the the Paris G signing um, for, for Vancouver FC. Yeah, Paris was a, a really, really big part of that York team last year. Um, I think I'm going to go with Moses Dyer, who's a name that we haven't brought up yet in this group. Um, a player who has scored at the Canadian Premier League level before uh, pretty, pretty consistently for Valor FC. I've uh, been away for a little bit, but has now come back to the CPL to to join this Vancouver group. I think he'll probably maybe play off the shoulder of Alejandro Diaz at times this year. I, th- I think that that's probably a, a pairing that they'll look to develop. And again, if they can find a way to get both of those players going and scoring goals at a at a reasonably consistent clip, then that'll be a very, very big game changer for this team. And Dyer is a player who can be you know that he can be the creative presence but he is also quite a good finisher and if you've got two of those in your team if they do choose to play them both together then i think that that will be a, a different attacking setup for vancouver this year which i think might work very well question number five mitch we have a whole minute to wow. answer this question because i think it's a tougher one but what does success look like for vancouver fc this year they finished seventh last season so they climbed out of the bottom which i think they they were pleased with towards the end of the year but what do you think 
they would they they would set the bar at this year. Yeah, I think I, I mean with the way they finished last season, um, I think they should have every belief that they can compete for a playoff spot this this year. And I think the goal should be making the the playoffs for the first time. I think that should be the goal for, for every club, obviously, in this league is to to get above that playoff line at minimum. But I think if they're in the race, like really in the race towards the end of the season and, and you know, push those eventual top five teams if they're not in it, then I think that's still a successful campaign and a, a step forward for, for them. But I, I really think they're going to want to um, make the playoffs this year. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's a team that won four of their last six last year and, and as the Ducks no. start going. That's probably the worst one we've had, le- had yet. Yeah, really I, I don't like that one. <laughs> <laughs> but this this is a team that uh, saw that they were playing spoiler to the end of last year, and I think that was nice, but they would have much preferred for those results to be putting them into playoff spots, not just knocking other teams out of them. And I do think that there is a talent in this team and the experience in this team uh, in year two to definitely be in the conversation for that. Uh, We'll see if they can put things together and establish that identity quite early in the season. And if so, then I think there's every reason to believe that this is a Vancouver team that can make the playoffs. Again, thank you very, very much for joining us on along the way in this seven team season preview show. Vancouver FC entering their second year in the CPL and we hope that you join us tomorrow for the final one of these with Valor FC.